They say good things come in threes, and if this week's guests are anything to go by, that is definitely true. If you were growing up in the noughties, these three talented women would have likely been a part of your musical life. Those harmonies on point. The hooks forever there in your brain. I love them so much. The original members of one of the UK's most iconic groups have come back together 20 years after their debut album, One Touch, came out. And we couldn't be happier. And look, let's just be honest, we can always use a bit more sweetness in our lives. Welcome to This City, the podcast that reveals the stories, hidden gems and certified spots tried and tested by some of London's most recognisable names. Whether they're born and bred in the capital or have made it their second home, London holds a key piece to their heart. And this week we have got Keisha, Mutia and Siobhan, aka the OG3. It's the Sugar Babes. So welcome to my podcast and I'm smiling like a little fangirl because I'm so Uh, excited. (laughs) Messia, hello. Hello. Keisha, hello. Hi. Siobhan, hello. Hello. Um, (laughs) (laughs) We're we're all there some London accents. We're all all nice and cosy in the studio. Everyone's got a cover. And yeah, we're just ready to chat. Um, Before we kind of get into, I guess, the origins and what's been going on over the past few years, I want to go back to one specific night. The very first time I saw you three perform together in ages, was at the Scala. That was such a joyous night, that gig. So tell me about everything that kind of led up to that night. Well, I just remember that it was like 110 degrees and hotter when you were inside. And, oh my God, even the fans on stage, it was just like blowing dry air Mm. down my throat and it was making it quite hard to sing. But it was just mental. Like, the fans were insane and it was quite overwhelming to to soak up the atmosphere um even the drive up seeing like the line just wrapped around the building with more people just wanting to get in and you know see us ever since we came back together first off as mks it has just been so special for us because we hadn't performed with each other really since we were 15 years old so as it's as excited and as you guys were we were too yeah. and it was just like oh my gosh we're doing this for me especially obviously having different faces like, it was nice to like look over and see Siobhan and see Mutia and I the really miss ones. singing with them so. <laughs> Mutia sorry listen That's don't hold my back opinion. don't hold back I, this, I, 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 I won't, I won't disagree back, with myself no of course not <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I knew you three were not going to hold back <laughs> but, no, but yeah I mean it really was amazing well, it that's was really it good. and I think that the, the energy between you three definitely like bounced off the stage <laughs> that night why did you pick the Scala what was it about that venue that you thought yeah, this is where we're gonna we're gonna come back. I don't know if we picked it actually. Yeah. I think our agent did. My but... agent, but I think Scala in general was such a good place anyway. I go raving in Scala quite often. <laughs> but I think it's a good place anyway. It's got that kind of dark, quirky feel, and maybe it's because I'm always there. It was actually nice this time being on the stage. And it's nice it. when you know a venue. Of the course. last time I was there was for Garage Nation. <laughs> and um the bouncer said to me in the door, he was like, Oh ladies, people don't wear heels to raves anymore. Oh no. I was like, is it, do, do you, you mind? Uh, How very like, day who from the like original time around? No, we it's because they wear dresses raise. with trainers. That's yeah, why. I know, but you know, whatever. A dress that's with trainers. Wearing, I'm, I'm, so. I still can't get into that. Okay, that's something my daughter wears. Oh, dresses I only with trainers. wear trainers. So, I think that's such a British thing, right now. I oh no, it, it, it definitely is. It definitely. Right, is. So when you go raving at the Scala, you're in heels and a full look. I like to wear jeans a lot. So I wear like jeans and maybe some like nice heels. If not heels, then it would be ch- if we like some trainers. <laughs> but it would never be a dress and trainers. Right. I just find it a bit weird. I can't go out all night in heels. This one night oh, yeah. was like the only night I was out in heels yeah. and to be like berated for it, I felt quite embarrassed. That's pretty funny, actually. Did he know who you were? How very <laughs> dare he? But yeah, no, I love Scala as, as a venue. It is a lovely venue. And obviously you're just constantly driving past it in London, isn't it? Like that's the way... West to east, that's where you're going. So. But I think the sound sounds really good in there as well. You three sounded amazing that night. I just remember particularly uh, when you performed Stronger. And Siobhan, when you went for like, you know, the, the, the bridge, mm-hmm. people lost it. How was it to kind of accept that? It was about the opposite kind of reaction to what I was expecting because, you know, Heidi had such a big role in the band and I completely respect that. And I didn't really know how to gauge how people would react to me singing that part. And for them to just be so warm and welcoming to me doing it and when they just went mental, I mean... 
I forgot where I was. The thing is, you took it and you made it your own. Mm. And I think that's the main thing, even with any other songs that we've sang, yeah, where you've got you to been mix a part it up of it. and do your own Literally, thing. Literally, like, I loved it. At that moment, I became like one of the people in the crowd. It's I like was a mother. like, mother. Look at it again. I was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I watched it. I actually, when it was our was 90th so anniversary excited. the other day, I watched it on, um, it was the first time actually on like the Manchester one and the yeah. London ones what did on you watch YouTube. It? On YouTube, yeah. 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 My and face. I was just trying to really was... get the parts that she was singing Aww. and could just see me keep like that. Yeah, yeah. It was like, I never watched anything back. I didn't, but yeah. it was like I can't, that day. It makes I was me forced. cringe. Can't watch anything back at all. No, yeah. never. I nearly didn't watch um, the Graham Norton show until back. I called you. And so I was like, like oh, I'm so awkward. I'm such a You didn't want to watch it. Back, it. Like, you were actually, nervous. I oh, you know what? Actually, I had to convince her. She convinced me, and then I called you, and I was like, listen, I've just spoken to Mushu, and she's given me confidence, so I think we should watch <laughs> well, it. Well, like the Graham Norton show. What's wrong with us? We've done it for such a long time, but I do kind of think it keeps it quite magical because we're never jaded about anything and mm. we don't take anything for granted. We always want to bring our best and we want to do our best and we always mm. want to get better. And yeah. I do like that about our dynamic. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the thing. I think, you know, as a fan, as somebody that works in the music industry, I think it's been such a positive and sincerely heartwarming thing to see you three come together because, you know, it's been a story of what it is to be in the music industry as a young woman, which I still don't think is talked about enough. You know, the protection of artists and whether that's protecting you physically physically and mm -hmm. mentally, mm -hmm. you three come to place of maturity and forgiveness with each other. I mean, who called who first to kind of reignite things? I like I, so long ago. I used to see Mutia <laughs> out and about quite right. a lot. If I'm being completely honest. Please be. After my departure from the last lineup of Sugar Babes, I was kind of, would never have thought in a million years that I would be back in any lineup, especially back with the Sugar Babes. I hadn't really spoken to Siobhan since I was maybe 16. And Mutia kind of sporadically through the years, obviously I've known Mutia since I was like nine, but I just never saw that come in. And then I got a phone call from my lawyer and that was sort of maybe 2010. And I just, I wasn't in the right place. <laughs> <laughs> then the idea came around again, I think uh, late 2011, maybe 12. And I thought to myself, if I take the emotion out of it, how did I truly, truly feel about the first album? Um, and One how Touch Classic. One Touch Classic. Yeah, and how did I really feel about Mutia and then Siobhan? And then that's when I sat there and I thought to myself, I always, even through the Sugar Bates, I would always think, damn, like the story wasn't, it was Meaning halfway told us. and it didn't reach its full potential. <laughs> and I always thought that. And then I kind of looked and I was like, Mutia, you know, I love listening to her voice and I love, you know, just being well, around someone who I grew up with. <laughs> and then Siobhan, I really like, I to this day think Siobhan's one of the strongest songwriters. Oh, yeah. Uh, like ever. Don't give and, it up. We, we still love that single. <laughs> like, like, out, like outside of even the like, I'm a, I'm a fan of Siobhan's anyway. But I also thought, you know what, you guys were 15, 15 and 16. And I think sometimes outside voices, especially in the press, they get to take sound bites of a interview and then blow it up yeah, and I had a narrative yeah it? they get to control the narrative I hadn't had a conversation with her myself and I thought as long as it really feels genuine I think we could actually all do it and then Siobhan and I met and it was, was such a nice meeting yeah where did you where did you go to meet we met at the, the, hotel. the is it the Lonsborough it's opposite it Hyde that? Park yeah we met it was just so different because we turned up as adults you know yeah. we hadn't talked in a long time like for we no reason in dark glasses and like <laughs> I remember you pulled up in your Range Rover and I was oh, like, Lord. she drives. Like, I can't, I can't, yeah. I'm like, you know, like you can't imagine someone behind the wheel. And yeah. I was like, so she's like an actual adult. And then it just wasn't what I <laughs> expected because you expect to sit down and converse exactly the way you did before. And of course you don't, you know, and it was in a way like meeting for the first time, mm. you know, but it was just such a nice evening so much had been unsaid because we hardly spoke I don't think in no. the, when we were kids it was just always a vibe and I think that was then perpetuated through maybe adults around us big time and and even just now I have so many children around me like my nieces and nephews and if they're having a like a little bit of a weird vibe I'm the first person to be like okay listen you're special and you're special and you're very different and how are we going to fix this that never happened with the sugar babes we were but never... There was a lot for people to gain by the divide and conquer, and it's taken us a long time to see it coming a mile off, and we do now. And which is a great testament to, I guess, you three just yeah reconnecting the fact mm. that you're not 
letting people do that. Mm. Now you mentioned that you, you used to see Monsieur around. Yeah, always where at a party. <laughs> where, were you, where were you two crossing pubs? <laughs> At events. Events, yeah. Random events. Yeah. <laughs> you were DJing and then I was DJing at Somewhere, something. And then, right. Yeah. Was doing something. It was always, yeah. yeah. And it would always be something. Yeah, and it was, always, it was always nice to see each other. I found the pictures of the first place I bumped into you. And we took a picture. It was like in um, the embankment. It was a, I remember what I was wearing. Yeah. I what was it? Look? kind of where It was kind of random. It was like it a, a nudie colour colour thing. Yeah. 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 Not very mean. Yeah, but, it was well. a lot brighter. Yeah. So, you, mean, so you guys Sorry. were never really. <laughs> so you guys are never really too Thanks. far away from each other. No. Now you grew up in the same area, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're all like northwest. Where did you grow up, Monsieur? So I grew up in northwest London. Whereabouts, Monsieur? Whereabouts in Kingsbury. I was born and bred there. Moved out of there for like a good ten years and come back again. My daughter now goes to the same school me and Keisha went to. I just love my area. It's just nice to go around and see people that you've known for years. And sometimes it's not nice to bump into people you can't really stand. But to be honest, it's, such a, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a community, do you know what I mean? And That's what everyone knows everyone. But it's also yeah. quite nice to see people getting really gracefully old. Really, not in a good way. <laughs> so I'm like, well, looking at them going, oh my God, that's the guy he's so fancy. And I'm like, oh! and I feel like I'm going reversing. So it's even better. So when I go around my area... I Isn't it like funny when, when you bump into <laughs> I'm reversing look, look these other people now. But, but, but it, it is true. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Isn't it funny yeah. though, like when, when you go back to your home area or you bump into somebody who used to be the in thing and you'd be like, oh my God. Oh my goodness, and you see them just all of them. Yeah, them. All, all of them. Time. All the hot ones. This one, it it's is. okay, people, to be mediocre because you know what? I look like I a boy know, called Dwayne for half my life. And when I hit <laughs> about 18, 19, mm -hmm. something happened when my face started to change. It's just facts, by the way. Like, yeah. I'm not even saying this is a joke. There is a video out there, and you know I'm so gonna, hard you on yourself. You are a teenager because you've always been pretty. Like the one-touch artwork, oh, no, I, I think it's so, iconic I and amazing. Away. And you you just can't stand Pardon? it. It's, I look like a nine-year-old boy. No, you you've always been cute. So I won't have it. One-touch um, album cover. Let's not be. So uh, let's be honest. Cool Pull it up and see if I look like a little I'll, a little nine-year-old boy. As somebody like who grew up at the same time as you, seeing you three together in the Ovo video, I was like, wow, because it was. I think we I were ahead of a little bit time. maybe better in the video. No, because it, it was like, but it was, it, for me, you guys represented three young girls in London. Yeah. You weren't styled ridiculously. Like, you just looked like girls that you'd bump into, like, at your local. Okay. Yeah. Siobhan's just pulled a picture. Yeah, little boy, look. <laughs> of the one-touch album. Little one I've got, like, I a like chubby. Like, we all it, look I like love blokes. it. I, this is growing on me. That's no. my, I'm talking about you know, the so moustache that, moustache that, smiling, that I had. You had a moustache? She, okay, here's the thing. You know when you you have oh, those get pictures rid of it right now. Every time we went to Germany, <laughs> okay, as we the speak, hair and makeup just Siobhan is just bringing <laughs> up. Siobhan is bringing up some pictures. classics from uh, I don't know from back in the day. Here's awful. the thing. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's Google went down and, and erased everything, which would be great. It was of the era. Yeah, I love it. it. Was, yeah. Yeah. So, okay, all right, so if that's the case, sorry, can we just explain to people, like, yeah. stop dissing people about eyebrows then? Because listen. <laughs> I was about to say, you were really over right, back Let me just then. explain something. When we were first out, eyebrows <laughs> was in. I don't, the, the really thin eyebrows was in. Obviously now I can say I've got thick eyebrows. But the fact is, <laughs> she the fact is, back. you know, obviously, as you said, it was an era. Yeah. So I, I just want to... I love how no one said anything said. about your eyebrows, but no, you're no, already no, on the same no, 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 But we were talking about the, the fashion and all that. So I was just putting it in yeah, there for the universe eyebrows. to hear that eyebrows back then was right. No, to have a thin <laughs> eyebrow around <laughs> that was. time was acceptable. Don't lie. It, no, it definitely was. It was. And to be honest with you, back then, coming from the area that we came from, or I think it was most teens at that time, mm. to be smiling like a treasure cat in pictures just Maybe. was not cool. So you would be in the best mood and the moment you saw a camera, it would just be a straight face. Like normal. Kim and Kanye yeah. are not, like now they we obviously they do it. We were shy as well. Yeah. We that were was, shy, but even with my friends, if I was taking pictures, well. I, think I we would. Were painfully That's shy. just face. I think we were mistaken. Yeah. People, people did kind of look at that because at the time, mm. everyone else was smiling and everything else and we didn't really know what the big deal was no. and I remember there was a video called Soul Sound mm -hmm. and that's when let's say that we had our first what I feel was like oh, industry yeah. moment because we were told you've got to smile you've got to be more smiley and that's why for me I look at that moment I'm like that was the start of trying to be controlled whereas up until mm -hmm. that point yeah, well, when we were writing right. like our run for covers and all these things we were just ourselves but I remember just them being very like you know 
you guys need to be more approachable and more this. Like the more voices that were coming in, the more it was like you need to smile more. Actually saying I that. I didn't love the Soul Sound video, probably so for that reason. But I can actually see, I'm, I'm just thinking about it now. Do you remember? There was always the side smile. Trying to come out. Yeah, we were. <laughs> and like, you also, Yeah, because we were, we were still trying we to were smile. Told that wasn't we as cool. To. That's a really, yeah. and it's really interesting you, that you bring up that story because isn't it so indicative of how, as women, we are sort of told to be obedient? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And to be obedient is to put on a happy face. Of course. And there is something about, but why should I show my teeth in order to make not, yeah, you feel yeah. comfortable? Show some skin, happy. but not too much. Skin. Yeah. Do you yeah. Don't Clara, have you noticed right. as well with guys? If you're walking through a club or something, and oh, you're gonna smile. Oh, I hate smile that. Then, I hate that. And yeah. the, it's the se- exactly what you're saying. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. And you're being told that at what, 14, 15, yeah, 16? Yeah, we were like 15, 16. That it was the normal thing to not to be moody. I mean, we, you know, we're we growing up moody. as well. We're like was... 14, 15. We're still ca- trying to get to know ourselves and so growing up with different people. And, mm. and also, but we're not smiling and laughing our asses off right you. now, are we? And that's just because it's just your natural, <laughs> it's just your natural state when you're just talking to people and, you yeah. know. Or how you yeah. felt comfortable at the time. But yeah, no, it's not a bad thing, right. but I do, I do feel like it's important for artists or women or whatever just to so, authentically yeah. be themselves absolutely yeah. what fashions were you loving from your area in particular or what what was the thing in northwest that I'd, you had to have little pushes oh it my was, god loafers. okay so but and that was a shopping? bit of a loafer, wasn't it? And where were you shopping, by the way? Were no, you going Wembley Market? Like, where were you shopping? You're talking about wedges. I was going oh, Brent Cross back so then. Loafers. And what's that other place? I used place? to shop in Brent Cross then. Too. Brent Cross yeah. and um, um, what's the place by um, where hey, we Harrow. Morgan? Harrow. Harrow, there we go. What's the... Harrow Shopping Centre. Harrow Shopping Centre. Is that what it's called? With yeah. it, and St. George's. St. George's. St. George's. <laughs> Boom. I remember that I went through a phase where I did black lip liner oh with gloss. And it was all about the baby hair. And I remember when I did a style that I feel like I made up. It's horrendous now. But I had the middle part or slicked back. And then there was two squig. I've got a picture. Two squiggles in the front. And I remember you loved it, Matia. I remember we went and I felt so good because like, we went to this um I was Chinese- one out because it- black lip liner wasn't really going to work on me. Yeah. <laughs> it was this place and it had, um it, you could do like photo booths and, and stuff like that. In Kingsbury. It was Collindale. In Collindale. In Collindale. And Matia <laughs> took me there and Honestly, all the boys were looking at this this damn hair, so it was horrendous. And I remember we went to take the pictures, and I I've got the picture to this day. And oh, I was squinting and everything. You can't tell me anything about that baby hair. So that for me, the baby hair was key. I used to wear a lot of Adidas and like more Adidas. Yeah, timeless. Very timeless. All but the classic I, looks. And that's what's so cute about it now is that my daughter wears pretty much. She doesn't wear Adidas. She has this thing about. Mum, you can't wear Adidas with Nike. It's not allowed. As I say, well, Batman and mixed brands. Well, listen, so, so this is what she does. So this is what she does. So everything I like, the trainers that we used to wear back in the days, like the, is it the, the night? Oh, you know. no, 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 even, I'm still Reebok Classics. Feelers. So, feelers, feelers to even all the night trainers. My, my daughter's wearing all of them now. So I'm like, oh my God, I should have just kept my pair of trainers. And you could have had them. And she was like, no, times are different. But it's 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 very similar to how we grew up. Mm. Just watching her and yeah, her not friends. Not that much has very, changed. Nothing much changed. Would you say she's a quintessential London kid? Yeah. She's definitely something right now. She keeps you young, I think. She keeps me very young. But the, I mean, to be honest, I mean, I wouldn't know the music that I know now if it wasn't for her. So she kind of brings me into what's the latest thing and convinces who I should try and, us three should try and get into the studio with to work with. So she names all these rappers. I'm like, yeah. She goes, yeah, because mom, if you get in with them, yeah, <laughs> she thinks we're gonna get number one straight away. So I'm like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> but yeah, it's She's just probably nice. right. To be honest, your daughter's like A and R. I like it. Yeah. No, she does. She takes my um, Instagram and she secretly messages people. <laughs> With a blue tick that she likes to Stop see where, because she's like, I'm like, why are you doing it for? She goes, someone likely you're going to read your message, they're mine. Oh my God. So I'm like, you're making Tyler, me look yeah. like a fan here. <laughs> so I have to start deleting people. But she's there. Yeah, she keeps me young with the, with the, whatever's going on today. Bless I guess. her. She's a good girl. Thanks very much for listening to this podcast. And I know that listening to this podcast means you are familiar with me. And you will know that I don't spawn it if I don't mean it. And I absolutely mean it when I say I love Depop. If it wasn't for Depop, I wouldn't have found not one, but two of my Luke's for Notting Hill Carnival. 
Notting Hill Carnival is a very big and special deal to me and my mates. And you know what? You've always got to bring a look. And if it wasn't for Depop, I wouldn't have found a couple of vintage pieces that I absolutely loved. Depop is a global community where there are more than 18 million users in over 147 countries. And I hope that you become one of them with me. In fact, I'm selling stuff on there too with all proceeds going to charity. So download the Depop app and happy shopping. I think the thing about you three is that what people like as well is that obviously you are all three so different. Yeah. We've got a dark skinned black girl. We have got a half Asian girl. We've got a white girl with like this gorgeous red hair. And you all look so different, but you could tell that you were unified in that way. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk to you about like your backgrounds because you are all essentially like the the kids of immigrants. So yeah, yeah, we got Irish, Jamaican and Filipino. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to know how that sort of affected you guys as artists and growing up in London. So Siobhan. My mum actually was born here. Mm. She was born in London and her family are from Limerick and Mount Mellick in the Republic of Ireland. So I guess my dad came over um, at 15 from Northern Ireland but I guess that doesn't make him an immigrant because he's it's still the UK but he was sure treated like an immigrant still very different back then though, it was. <laughs> he was no sure... black no so dogs no Irish that yeah. Yeah. Le- and that, well actually that phrase has always stuck with me in the way my dad mm-hmm. was treated as a builder here and yeah some some rough times you know he moved yeah. over to Harlesden and lived all around Kilburn and Kingsbury Irish. married my mum in Kingsbury mm-hmm. as well so that's kind of I'm my connection with, yeah. with Kingsbury um, so I've always considered myself Irish and not English and I think I've done that because of like the way my dad was treated in the oh, way and they say that no one's more angry than like the second generation immigrant you know mm-hmm. which would be me yeah I love London I've never been able to to move from here but I do consider myself just Irish and how the Irish community sort of reacted to you and I guess your wider community reacted to you bit being in the sugar Bay. like what was it like as a teenager you definitely get the Irish vote Right. Like, you know, whenever I'd go over to Ireland, like everyone was super excited. Like it was a big deal that I was, you know, Irish descent and everything. And um, where I'm from, which is like East Coast around um, South Rice, it's like northwest suburbs of London. That is like a big Irish community. That's where like the GAA club is, where they're doing your Irish dancing, I which I it. did. And uh, yeah, your Gaelic football and stuff. So it's it's very Irish around there. So you could definitely feel very much connected to that Irish community. Hmm. Didn't fancy putting any uh, Irish dancing, any sugar babes routines from back in the day. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> it's possible now no. if you want to do it. I do quite like a bit of Irish diddly dee music though. Mm-hmm. But I don't quite know how we work that in. Where do you go to kind of get your, your cultural fix? Well, the GAA club in South Rysip, you go there to get your Tato's. <laughs> but there's uh, the old Shillelagh pub in Stoke Newington is amazing. Every week they have like proper Irish live music like fresh Guinness on tap you could just be that. yeah you could be in Ireland nice. it's, it's wicked and Keisha your roots my dad's from Manchester my mum's from London both of my grandparents on both sides are from Clarendon and Kingston Jamaica I've just been heavily influenced by reggae music. I've got a lot of musician relatives in my family. There's a a legend <laughs> artist called Barrington Levy. Oh yeah, he's my mum's cousin. That's so funny. And I so, love that. I know. I know. <laughs> wow. All of these and the things I've always known that I've always had music around me. My parents had me when they were very young, like twenty, nineteen, and twenty, mm. and um, there was just a lot of reggae music around the house. And through that, I learned how to do harmonies. And then when I was about thirteen, fourteen, I I was sort of introduced into more so of the gospel type uh, side of music. My mum became born again Christian. And through that, that's when I started getting introduced to more sort of like Kim Burrell and people like that. Um, so that's kind of like what's been my influence, but I've just always grown up around music. And how did you find a connection to your Jamaican community where you grew up? It was in the family. Yeah. Because even though my parents were like born here, most of their siblings were not. And obviously their parents sort of raised them as if it, they, were. they were in Jamaica. Mm. So all the food, everything else, like the Dutch, but just everything was Jamaican, but with a British twist. Right, right, I right. would say. We also could so, rely on Naptali to always take us to a Jamaican yeah, restaurant. Right. Right. Oh, Jamaican yeah, right. I was just going to ask, so when you need to get that taste <laughs> of home, yeah, where are you going to get your, your well, best Jamaican food? I mean, I cook it. 
Okay. <laughs> so, but also, um, Naptali, who Siobhan just mentioned, he was Drive sort of like a tour manager, uh, a chaperone for us. Mm -hmm. He was a Rastafarian guy who basically, when we were young mm -hmm. and in the studio, he would literally be making food for everybody. So Our very first manager who actually created the Sugar Babes, he was a Jamaican guy with dreadlocks. So we've always kind of been around, around that culture. Mm -hmm. Anyway, for I know sure. where my favourite Jamaican restaurant is where Rudy's in Dalston oh that's a good one I haven't been there I haven't it's really been good. I know I keep one. saying we need to go when you come over and there's then we one never in, actually make it out of the house because we're there's one in chatting. Brixton as well it's called the Eat of Eden in Brixton Village and they just do an amazing array of like vegan food Jamaican food very very fresh there's this amazing pea soup nice. that is to die for know, like hungry. this red pea soup and it's just honestly oh, a bit hungry now they're like we, <laughs> they're like don't worse. call it soup we call it sip, sip. they're oh. very like funny about that like soup has all this rubbish in it and we don't put rubbish in and, oh. and they don't put salt in it but yeah I can taste salt it's so flavourful it's amazing so all like nice just really nice ice all food basically yeah basically mm. yeah and uh, Monsieur yeah. you're Filipino and, and Irish I know yeah my mum was born here so mm. she was born in East London um, she a hackney girl. She Bethnal Green. She's, she's um, Whitechapel. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, she was born here. My dad was born in the Philippines. I think he came over when he was like in his twenties. He was in the army, so he was. It's all. For, I've got really military family over there. So he came over here. I think on a naughty one. He was naughty, so he had to run from the country. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, ha. Huh? My mum and dad's been together for like thirty-seven years, thirty-eight years now. I was born up in Northwest London, but also I grew up in the Filipino community, which was why I did silly little things like Little Miss Philippines and I love who it. Keisha performed a few times with actually right. in these places. Did you perform? I didn't someone? perform, but I used to. I used to, used come, to come to different, like, wasn't it? Cotillions. Sort of, Cotillions yeah. is like when when a girl turns 18, she has like a big party or we have lots of fiestas. Um, festival, party. like barrier fiestas. That's how um, you know Vanessa from the Saturdays Vanessa, and Miley yeah. in class. Because uh -huh. whenever they, they, I've seen them, they're like, oh yeah, you know, I used to see Mutia and I've known Vanessa since she was like a little girl. So we was in a, um, a Filipino group together for years and my lead actually but um i base myself as filipino just because i've grew up with it and i eat pretty much rice every day and <laughs> filipino food all the time and if i don't cook it at home then i go to a restaurant that sells filipino food or i'll go to my dad my dad will cook it what restaurants are you, are you going to so there's a few in wilsden <laughs> called nino's and then there's a place i go to it's in bang bangs called manila kitchen but now obviously they do it on uber eats so it's just great <laughs> i just get it straight to my door perfect but yeah it was just yeah it was nice being able to be brought up in different types of families. Plus, my mum's very Filipino. As much as she's white, she might as well be Filipino. So, yeah, she really immersed herself in your father's Definitely. culture. Definitely. She has the accent at times. Oh. And, it's, and, it's, <laughs> and I do say to her, mum, where are you from? <laughs> But also, it's a you, you're from a massive family. Like yeah. I am as well. Like the, my Irish family, are just it's it's huge. So I think that's a big it's almost like thing as well. it is a community in itself. You know, yeah. isn't it? So wherever you're kind of based. Yeah. And growing up, did you find your community sort of crossed over with, with each other? Yeah, we had, lot, I mean, we had, we had no choice to be fair, especially being in the group and stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, I always say that Siobhan's like an honorary like Jamaican over here. Like I, <laughs> I you know, and but there's well, we a, know there are so many similarities between the Jamaican Definitely. and Irish communities. Let's start mm -hmm. With the word th the letter the letter tree. The number, tree. Tree. we say that in the philippines tree. as well it's weird there we go there we go but, so. but i think in general when you live in london it's so multicultural that you do end up meeting other people from different cultures and taking on you know their culture and i think it's a beautiful thing that like, if you take you on tend someone to else's identify culture. more with each other than, than you would in Eng the english community mm -hmm. but bless my husband like you know he's very mm -hmm. english they're definitely more formal in their families yeah. and in in their relationships whereas I like i would it. say in in all three of our families it's more you know it's more about like shouting over each other yeah and, because you can never tell in this podcast you know <laughs> sorry yeah. I'm, the, I'm the worst for talking over no one's people. shouting but if it's, look i like it everyone's got a lot to say carry on i talk over everyone i know it's my worst habit i'm so rude but i'm from a family where i can totally <laughs> hear everyone it's i can hear so it's a gemini trait as well I'm you know gemini. seven people boom yeah. you're a gemini I sure am. Yeah. Ooh, Good, sure because am. she's always throwing some Gemini thing at me and I'm like, no, we're Gemini Taurus. We are. When's your birthday? 21st of May. I'm May 22nd. Mathieu, oh, you're, not, you you're not a Gemini. You are you're a Taurus. I'm definitely a Taurus. As, as the only Taurus. Libra in this Double room. Like okay, come bring the balance. Bring the balance, <laughs> let me, Keisha. Let me tell you about the only Libra in the room. This I one's being balanced. I, <laughs> I know. That's the, absolutely. I knew it is. We are, I think Libras are 
We are fair, and we, but we are indecisive. She's just looking at it because she knows what the picture is. She's just saying <laughs> that because That's... she's talking about herself. Yeah. The one yeah. thing yeah. is, yeah. I am, well, obviously, I am. Gemini. Am I fair? Am I fair? Do you I am fair. I am I'm fair. fair. No, I'm not saying you're not no, fair, babe, but you're I'm Gemini. fair. No, babe, you're a Gemini. We're going to understand this, aren't we? Can I say yes. But Gemini and Libra are the most compatible in the whole of the zodiac. We are. That's and true. can I be honest with you? We have the most success together, and we are... Are we both water signs or air signs? We're air signs. We're, We're both air signs. Air signs. Yeah. Air yeah. Signs. But we have so literally the most success. I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing, <laughs> you know, Gemini currently, you know. I, I definitely I like think Gemini. Geminis have a bit of a dual personality. Like I do, yeah. I do see definitely. that. I and agree. also very loving because as, as we did went through this whole conversation, uh, this whole situation, Monsieur just went and got some lip balm and I shared it with Siobhan. <laughs> oh, yes. yes. So loving. You always so do it when the lips are dry. This is it. Um, you <laughs> mentioned that you guys some. used to see each yeah, other around <laughs> um, performing as kids. Do you remember the very first show you guys did together in London? Ronnie Scott. Yeah, Ronnie Scott. No. I mean, that's oh, no. legendary. <laughs> well, I, I remember yeah. something me and you did together. All so, Saints Road. It was literally in in like in like the week where we were about to all meet, where for a moment I was going to be a solo, solo artist, artist and you were, <laughs> oh, and was... so is Matias. So, so people don't know the backstory of how it all came to be. Yeah. Can I just give it to us, right. please? So basically, Siobhan was recording with Ron, Ron, Tom. Ron Tom, who was our manager at the time. He was recording with Siobhan and then met Matias' dad in a supermarket, got talking, my daughter sings started recording with Mitya. So he's now got two girls separately. I met Mitya um, in year four. We were in the same class together in primary school. And, and what high school is this? No, primary school. What primary school, school is this? Uh, Kingsbury, Kingsbury Green. Green. Right. And we <laughs> were singing together all the time. And then one day Mitya's like, oh, I'm going to the studio. Can you come and keep me company? I'm recording a song today with a girl called Siobhan. And I went and was there just reading a magazine. And then Ron came out and he said, oh, Mitya mentioned that she sings with you sometimes. Sing something. And I think I had sang like an SWV song. He went into the studio and then was like, Mutia, come out, sing something together. And then me and Mutia sang, uh, I think, The Boy Is Mine mm-hmm. together. And then Siobhan came and then he was like, why don't you guys record something together today? And I spoke to Ron actually last week and he was saying to me that it was so funny because we sang the same but had different tones. So as soon as they all heard the blend, they were just like, it's just as amazing. It was the American mm-hmm. R&B yeah. influence, I think. That was so that's the 90s R&B. Brandy so that, and Monica. Yeah. I think I sung for him on Vogue, Don't Let Go. Yeah. yeah. That's what I sang So when you guys had done the performance... I hadn't been invited to the studio yet. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. So that was I was r- mortified at this gig that I did with Mitya, by the way. We had to sing separately. And she had like a history of getting up and singing in front of people. And I hadn't even sung in front of like <sighs> my mates. Right. So I was terrified. And I think I had to sing like a Mariah Carey song or yeah, something. You did. Probably did it terribly, but like everyone was really polite. And then Mitya get- did it really good. Mitya like belts out. Probably like the same song as well, wasn't it? <laughs> but just so that. much better. But that's how I felt about the t- at the time. I just remember thinking like, wow, the confidence levels were so amazing. No, what venue was, was it? And what venue was this? It was, it um, was on... All um, Saints Road. It, it was actually one of the other manager's restaurants. Was it was it Italian restaurant? And it was... They had we like an event space downstairs. Like Donnie was there and everyone yeah. was there. It was really... Because Ron Tom found the All Saints... So that's how we kind of got work with him. Yeah. We named like, them wow. All Saints after his road because yeah. he lived on All Saints Road. But of course. So yeah. he kind of definitely had an eye for... Yeah, yeah, he was really good. So he knew what bands. he was talking about. And then from that point there, we ended up having our first gig at Ronnie Scott's. So talk that about Ronnie insane. Scott's because Ronnie Scott's is such an iconic venue. Yeah. We didn't realise that Which we wouldn't have known that. <laughs> Go on, t- it's tell amazing. me about it. I mean, yeah. we had nothing yeah. to compare it to. I mean, I probably had never been to any gigs. It was our launch. Of like, our so I had, night, yeah. I had nothing to compare it All to. All I yeah. remember is that everyone was talking about how amazing this place was. Yeah. The only thing I remember is us getting these big bouquet of flowers. It was my first flowers that I ever got I remember a lot of adults in the audience and there was no peers and I thought oh our music's quite mature wasn't it time out that um they did a piece on like the top 20 gigs ever at Ronnie Scott's and we really? were on it and I was I'm like, like really what? yeah that's an honor such it an is, honor it really was a special night but in the same way I, I it's only in hindsight I can look back and remember I've got lots like, of pictures ha- I can remember the feeling and actually Scarlet the Scarlet gig felt like that yeah, it felt that special sure. It was kind of like going back into how it felt. Because obviously, I think now I appreciate more. I think if I did everything what I did now, like back then, oh my God, the excitement. 
But I think now it's just I can actually see like how really good, like how well and how much things we did. I wouldn't have even known we were in Soho. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yes. I wouldn't. Why, no, would I, no. why would I know? Yeah. But we were only up, f- yeah, we were young. My granddad used to run a horn cinema on Green Street. I was going to say a brothel. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah, he, I mean, we didn't go there with him, but he used That's to bring us into town. But I mean, I didn't Another know. Another one. <laughs> Sorry, quintessential yeah. London stories. Yeah. Oh, I love it. So look, your lives in London now are very different <laughs> to what they were as young girls. So Siobhan, what I've, is your London life now? Probably for the last 15 years, I've always done something as well as music. And for me, the pressures around the music industry and the fact that I found navigating the business side of it so difficult, the best thing I ever did was to diversify, basically. So I um, do the interiors for a company called N Family. I like having those two sides yeah. to my career. Nice. Mm. And I'm not based Northwest anymore. I'm in Hackney. been in Hackney now for 10 years. And before that, I was in Islington. So I don't have such a strong connection with where I grew up, I guess, Mm. anymore. I've probably felt the most at home where I am now. Nice. And and Keisha, how would you say your London life compares now to you? Um, I've always been North London. So when I moved from Kingsbury, I was always, I kept North. Very early on, at 18 years old, got on to the property ladder by the grace of God. And that has been basically the side hustle. My main sort of thing is the group, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. However, you know, I definitely feel like I've been through a lot of personal things over the last 10 years, which would probably shock a lot of people. And so I think in this next phase of life, it definitely is making sure that I'm expressive and sharing my story with people so it can kind of help people, I guess. And Mm. um, I'm really just into like people in this next phase and obviously what we do here. And your two favourite people. Exactly. You forgot us, Beb. Yeah. Monsieur, your London life compared to your early days in Sugar Babes compared to now. I have a 14 year old, so that's a big change. I moved out of London. I was in like past Watford for a hot minute. Moved back down, wanted my daughter to be in a more cultural high school. She went to, you know, the school she went to was just very, like there was no one else. They wasn't learning about anything that was, that I wanted her to grow up, that I, you know, grew up with. So I moved back down to Northwest London, got all my family and friends there still as well. But like my main thing is music. I do a bit of writing here and there when I can, just to keep in touch with music. Mm. Sometimes you fall out of music. I fall out of love quite easy when it comes to music. So I like to keep it moving sometimes. But besides from that, I do little gigs here and there. Got to keep that dough running. Of course. Seeing this is my main priority and... Yeah, that's what I'm just concentrating on at the moment. I just remember the two London legends that you sang with, actually. George Michael and Amy Winehouse. Yeah. I what an, what an absolute privilege to sing with both of those mm. two I just, artists. It's really, really, really weird to even know that they're no longer here. With George Michael, he was just the most, probably the most nicest person I've met. Very down to earth and just really chilled out. And Amy, we all knew Amy as well. You knew Amy. She was just... A legend. Let's talk about you guys in the future. So where can we see you next? A lot of what we're doing is kind of top secret, but we have said on the Graham Norton show that we're going to definitely, for mm-hmm. us, it's about celebrating the first album. It's been Amazing. 20 years since One Touch mm-hmm. and we're going to do something extra special for the fans. Mm-hmm. So keep in touch with what's one. going mm-hmm. on. Um, we might have some surprises throughout the, the year, yeah. um, but we'll have to just, we'll let you know as and when. Yeah, lots to the pipeline for yeah. the 20th anniversary. It's very exciting. Mm-hmm. I ask everybody this because people have got different relationships with public transport. Oh God, here we go. Do you still get the tube, the bus? How are you getting around? I get, tube. Yeah. I get tube. I don't like buses. We'll do, okay, M- you decided to start with starting you. <laughs> I, I get this over and done with. I only do trains. I can't do buses. I, there's something about a bus I just hate. I've never liked it when I was younger and I don't like it now. But a train is great. When we started working together again, what, like six or seven years ago, I got these two on the underground. No, it was Mitya. Never. Hang on, so you had to teach these two how to use the tube? Yeah. Some more than others. Mutia. No, Keisha, you were Keisha's terrible too. Yeah, but you, you know what? Like I, there's I, a light I, blue I, line I, and a, yes, and a dark thank blue you. line. It's very mm-hmm. confusing. You, you know, but when, once I downloaded that, that map, I it changed my life. And I was in there and I was finding my way and I felt very happy about that. I do both. It really just depends on the traffic. Let's put it that way. I'm mostly public transport, even with my kid now. He loves it. He wants to go on the choo-choo train, wants to go on the bus and say, thank you, driver. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, there's something it. about a bus I don't like. Just, you don't, I know why you don't like buses. I just don't like buses. You don't want to put your hand out for the bus, and it's the same thing. Because eh? you know when it comes. <laughs> do you remember when we were younger and the bus oh, would yeah, be coming? That, young and you put now, your hand out. I think that was one when I was younger. Oh, I because like, I used to always get they used to pass me all the time, so I don't bother. But my main thing is, I think it's just I like I think it's a childhood trains. trauma. A, yeah, it's a childhood trauma. I swear to God. And it's yet sorted, isn't it? I still get excited <laughs> about that. When the bus is coming, I'm just like, Can I'm like that. Put their hand out? It really depends. Like, what? if there's no one yeah. there. Yeah. That, that's that's giving me that's giving me anxiety right now to thinking about it. I, I couldn't do it. Like, if you told me right now as a dare, I'd be like, no, I can't do it. Yeah, I just I am funny about the just... bus. I won't go upstairs and I won't sit down. I don't oh, want to touch got... anything. Oh, oh, that's my sit. new thing. I by go the way. straight to the doors where you're getting off and I stand there. Really? I'm in everyone's way. You know, my like when everyone's trying to get off. See, she's the one that's trying to hide behind the bus and no one can notice her like this. No, no. It's case of sugar I'm upstairs. You I see, love I, going I, up. Why would you go upstairs for? It's one way thing. up and one way down. No, because you said you got it's quite funny for people when we wow. put on the tube together, which we were doing a lot. Oh at my one god, point. tell me about that. When people see you three together in public transport, yeah, we've done that a few times no, yeah, a few yeah. years ago now. But yeah, are the fans always is, eyes open? Very, they clock very, you immediately. Yeah, and they, they're all very they're confused. confused. One guy who was like trying to film us on the remember with his phone, and I was like, "Hello," put his phone down. But yeah, I think I think when we're together anyway, that's like more eyes. Okay. Mayor of London, yeah. we know it's Sadiq, but if he was uh, given a week off, if you're Mayor of London for a week or a day, what would you do? Siobhan. I mean, there are so many more important yeah. things. So, like, if I actually got to do this, this wouldn't be it. I would just love to see London just be a little bit cleaner. It is quite West I'm London is clean. East London, floor. not so much. What's going on in the Borough of Hackney? It really bothers me. I concur. I it mean, the biggest thing, rush. if we get serious about it, is homelessness. That's a major problem I, here. I honestly can't even really read the news at the moment because there's just so many things I could complain about. But um, lot, every yeah. year, yeah, I, I it's like very to... very notable. It's that, sad. that the, the problem with homelessness. Yeah, and just to encourage everyone that you can actually go and buy blankets yeah. and different things like mm-hmm. that and just like and handing places, it out yeah. and also um just you know sometimes like life is busy and you can kind of mm-hmm. you know forget about you know others, others. Mm-hmm. and I just think it's important just to have that if you're having a really bad day and you go and do something because someone else it actually makes you feel good it really so does. boom you're right Sugar Rays want cleaner <laughs> streets and just want you to look after each other which I think is lovely Thank and why you. you are the best girl band come on yeah. Sugar Rays <laughs> 